morning. Good morning. There's lots of lovely chatter as people are coming in. Good morning to the people in the cheap seats at the back um, and to everybody else. And a really warm welcome to um, our baptism families this morning, to um, Emil's family and Zadie's family, and also to our Ukrainian friends who celebrate Easter today. So it's a double bonus for us all. Um, we get two weeks to celebrate um, and we can share in um, Ukrainian Easter as well. Um, so we have an opening praise. Um, if everybody is happy to stand, if you would like to stand, we can share with the words on the screen. Um, generally, as we go through the, through the service, um, where you see words in white or not in bold, that's the leader, so that'd be either me or Margot. And where you see words in bold, that's your turn. So please join in. And it is um, from Psalm 100, which is a psalm of praise. So let's be praised. Pray. Praiseful. Lost my mic. Um, praiseful or whatever. Um, and, um, and say it with, with four. So shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Enter his courts with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. And we're going to continue this morning with great hymn of prayer. Crown him with many crowns.
stage, please. People in the charles will may need to stand up in due course so they can see. And can I invite Emil and Zadie to bring their parents and godparents to the back here as we gather for the baptism. Bring your baptism cards with you. Parents, godparents, babies, well, one each. Bring the cards because you'll need the words. One time on one side, not because we're dividing you up, but just because it's easier for that view that way. On one side to the other. Right, so we have Sadie and Emil. And today is, I always say, it's, it's not a spectator sport. We all have a part to play in this. Um, if you want to take some photos afterwards, we're happy to pose them um, so, you know, so that you can focus on the baptism. Um, but we're just delighted to welcome these two children and their parents and godparents and wider families and friends to this very important service. I hope you've all got sight of a baptism card because there again, as Sarah said, words in bold are for all of us. So we hope you'll join in with gusto. Faith is the gift of God to his people. In baptism, the Lord is adding to our number those whom he is calling. People of God, will you welcome Emil and Zadie and uphold them in their new life in Christ? With the help of God, we will. Parents and godparents, the church receives these children with great joy. Today, we are trusting God for their growth in faith. Will you pray for them? and draw them by your example into the community of faith and walk with them in the way of Christ. In baptism, these children begin their journey in faith and you speak for them today. Will you care for them? Help them to take their place within the life and worship of Christ's church. Now, Parents and godparents, you're responding on behalf of these children. So I ask you, in baptism, God calls us out of darkness into his marvellous light. To follow Christ means dying to sin and rising to new life with him. Therefore, I ask you, do you turn to Christ as Saviour? Do you submit to Christ as Lord? Do you come to Christ, the way, the truth, and the life? Now, water. Do you want to help me pour the water? I don't know your name. Alice, do you want to help me pour the water? No, fine, that's okay. Standard answer, but you know, it's always worth asking, isn't it? Steam may rise off this as we pour it in, but don't panic, it's not, we're not going to boil your babies. Some words as we pour the water. Praise God who made heaven and earth. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of water to sustain, refresh and cleanse all life. We pray that by your spirit, this water may bring Emil and Zadie to new life in Christ, who is the way, the truth and the life. Amen. Is a point where all the congregation join in. Together with those who are being baptised, let us affirm our common faith in Christ. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who died for us and rose again? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit? who gives life to the people of God. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. Do you believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? Amen. Who's going to go first then? Are you cheering? So you'd like to go first. Come on then, Zadie. 
She had her hand up, yes. Are you going to come here? It's very trusting of you. Yes, okay. Fine. Just keep your hands off the mic, so let's just do that, okay? Okay. Right. Full name. May Hicks and Lovitz Bowling. I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May God, who has received you by baptism into his church, pour upon you the riches of his grace, that within the company of Christ's pilgrim people, you may daily be renewed by his anointing spirit and come to the inheritance of the saints in glory. Amen. Let's do the next bit now while it's all quiet, shall we? It's easy. Christ claims you for his own. Receive the sign of the cross. Do not be ashamed to confess the faith of Christ crucified. Fight valiantly as a disciple of Christ against sin, the world, and the devil. And remain faithful to Christ to the end of your life. May Almighty God deliver you from the powers of darkness. Restore in you the image of his glory and lead you in the light and obedience of Christ. Amen. I'm going to give you back to Daddy. Well done. If you want to offer up, you can. Okay. Full name. Neil Glashman Hopwood. Oh, no, no, we practiced this this morning. It was okay. Neil Glashman Hopwood, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May God, who has received you by baptism into his church, pour upon you the riches of his grace, that within the company of Christ's pilgrim people, you may daily be renewed by his anointing spirit, and come to the inheritance of the saints in glory. Amen. Amen. Christ claims you for his own. Receive the sign of the cross. Do not be ashamed to confess the faith of Christ crucified. Fight valiantly as a disciple of Christ against sin, the world, and the devil. And remain faithful to Christ to the end of your life. And may Almighty God deliver you from the powers of darkness, restore in you the image of his glory, and lead you in the light and obedience of Christ. Amen. Well done. And now more for us all to say and do. As part of the Church of Christ, we all have a duty to support Emil and Zegi by prayer, example and teaching. Let us now pray for grace in guiding them to grow up as Christians within the family of the Church as we say together. Faithful and loving God, bless those who care for these children and grant them your gifts of love, wisdom, and faith. Pour upon them your healing and reconciling love, and protect their home from all evil. and establish them in the joy of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. There is one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Emil and Zadie, we are all baptised into one body through the Spirit. We welcome you into the fellowship of God. We are children of the same Heavenly Father. We welcome you. Shall we give them a round of applause? And because we believe the Bible and the stories it contains are important, we always give our baptism children and their families, uh, a children's Bible, so that we hope you will get to know the stories as you grow up. That is for Emil, a book for him. There are cards in there for everybody, so have a look when you get home and see. <laughs> you want to see cards in there for everybody in your family too. And there is another part of the service which we will do at the very end. So, we're going to sing a song now. There's a lot of talk in this service about going from darkness to light. And we're going to sing a song which most of you will know. Um, this little light of mine. And if you want to take them on walk about and introduce them to the congregation while we sing this, you want to do that? Can we stand and sing?
Well done. If you'd like to take a seat, Ben's going to come and give us our reading. This morning's reading comes from Matthew 28, verses 1 to 10, which you can find on page 946 in your church Bibles. After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and, going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples. He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the woman hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him and clasped his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Ben. Um, Marco is going to come and speak to us. I'm going to face you guys to say this. Margot's facing that way, so I'll face this way. And I'll move away from Margot's microphone. Um, let's just pray for Margot before she comes to speak to us. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for Margot. We thank you for the preparation that she's put into um, her words this morning. And we just pray that you'll be with her and give us the ears to listen and to hear. Amen. I hope you were listening carefully to that reading because it's going to ask me some questions in a minute. It's said that anyone who was around in 1963, and I realise many of you have not, were not, um, can remember where they were and what they were doing when they heard that President Kennedy had been assassinated. More recently, we can probably all remember exactly where we were and what we were doing when we heard the news that the Queen had died. And I think the women in that story that Ben just read would have had a very clear memory of the way in which they found out that Jesus was no longer dead or in the tomb, but had risen and was on his way into Galilee. This reading takes us back to last week, Easter Day, when we celebrated the resurrection of Jesus. And indeed it is the same story, though from a different gospel, and seen from a slightly different angle. But it takes us back to those astonishing events and people's reaction to them. So it takes us back, but I think it's also meant not just to take us back, but to propel us forwards. Just as it propelled the two women, the two Marys who were there, towards a new understanding of who Jesus was and what, he'd, what had happened. As a quick recap on the story, following Jesus' death and crucifixion on Good Friday, two friends came, took his body down from the cross, went to this garden and put him in a tomb nearby. And having done that, they rolled a stone across the entrance to seal the tomb. Grave robbers were always a risk and they wanted to make sure the tomb was secure. Matthew, the gospel writer, tells us that two people were there watching it all happen. And I've already told you once, so I hope you were listening to me as well as to the reading. Can anyone remember who they were? It's an all-age service, I'll take an answer from anybody. Who were the two people by the, watching what was going on? The two Marys, yes. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary. I can imagine the ignominy of always being known as the other Mary. <laughs> We're sitting opposite the tomb on the Friday, watching as all this was done. And the following day, Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor, who had his own reasons for wanting the tomb to be secure, ordered that the tomb should be sealed and a guard posted there. And so presumably after that, everyone except the guards went home. <coughs> So far, so good, so straightforward. 
And then at dawn on the Sunday morning, what happened? Yes, these same two women, the two Marys, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, make their way back to the tomb. And this story like that goes to and fro, it goes back and forth. Can anyone remember what happened at the moment when Jesus died? Something significant and noisy and loud. The curtain was torn, yes. Why was the curtain torn? Because there was a, an earthquake. And if you've ever been in one, they're really quite alarming. Matthew tells us there was a violent earthquake as Jesus died, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, opening up the way into the inner sanctum of the temple, which is sort of that bit right up there where they're sitting, which previously was closed to everyone except the high priest. And now, three days later, we read about another earthquake. The stone is rolled back from the tomb by the angel, no less, who then sits on the stone. There's such an irony in this, isn't there? The guards are set by Pilate to guard the closed, occupied tomb and make sure it stays that way. And now an angel is keeping guard over the tomb because it's empty. Almost always when angels turn up in the Bible, the first thing they say is, don't be afraid, because who wouldn't be scared witless to meet an angel in person? And this angel is no exception. He knows exactly why the two women are there, and he doesn't need to ask, but he says to them, firstly, words of reassurance, don't be afraid, he says. I know you're looking for Jesus, who was crucified, but you're looking in the wrong place. He isn't here. And the angel invites these startled women to check for themselves, to see the tomb is empty, and then to go and tell the rest of Jesus' followers what they have or haven't found. He invites them in. He says, come and see the place where Jesus was, and then go quickly and tell the disciples what's happened. Tell them Jesus is risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. Here, you're looking in the wrong place, but go there and you will see him. And threaded through this story is the line, come and see, then go and tell. Because this tomb which has been closed and sealed is now open. Because Jesus has been released from the tomb and has come out of it, these women are released to enter it and to go in. Come and see, then go and tell. ubiquitous Ikea bags and stuff, all sorts of things. If I show you this, it's not difficult to see that it's empty. Should have biscuits in it, but there is nothing. This one, it's a bit more tricky. It's very light. You can't see whether there's anything in it or not. How are you going to find out? And would somebody like to come and have a look? Huh? I could shake it. No, just the bow wobbles. Anything else? Yes? Listen, when you over to shake. Mm, I think I can only hear the bow rattling. Anything else? How are you going to know whether there's anything in it or not? Yes. Take the lid off. Does anybody, does anybody want to come and take the lid off? You can't take the lid off. Come on then. You come and take the lid off. It's right, there's nothing nasty. It's okay. Yes, you take the lid off, that's fine. That's what it's for. Now tell them, is there anything inside there or not? Yes. Ah, what's inside? Um some boxes and uh, coins. Well done, some boxes and coins. Are the boxes full or empty? Okay, I'll hold the lid. Yeah, you can touch them, they're alright, they won't break. There's nothing there, you're quite right. That's a very disappointing box, isn't it? Another disappointing box. Nothing in there. Well, it's a bit of a cheat just to hold it apart, really, so there you go. 
There are things in there. There are coins. I really wouldn't recommend eating them because they're quite old chocolate coins. But there you go. Okay. Thank you very much for your help. So the only way to see what's inside is to go and look. And that's what he said to the women. Come and see. Then go and tell. Those women represent all of us. Matthew says they were afraid, but he also says they were filled with joy. But before they reach the disciples, Jesus meets them and greets them. And they want to stay, but he shoes them off and says, don't hold on to me, but don't be afraid. Go and tell my brothers and my sisters and my friends to go to Galilee and they will see me there. Quite apart from the fact that the tomb is empty, there are several surprising things about this story because had you ever noticed that no one actually witnessed the resurrection? No one witnessed the moment of resurrection, but the evidence is there. The women go in and they find nothing except the folded grave clothes. There's an empty tomb, there's an angel keeping guard. The other guards are so frightened by the earthquake and all that they're just shivering wrecks and absolutely useless. And as if that weren't enough, Matthew tells us that witnesses were the two women, the two Marys. In the very patriarchal society of that day, that was astonishing. The women would not have been admissible as witnesses in a court of law, but God makes them the witnesses for the resurrection of Jesus. It marks a new beginning, off with the old and on with the new. And that is exactly what is happening here today, as we have been witnesses to the baptism of Emil and Zadie. Like the women in Matthew's story, we've been invited to come and see so that we can go and tell. Zadie and Emil may not remember very much about today, but their parents and godparents, their families and friends, all of us who've been here, we shall remember in the Bible and in a number of other churches today, baptism is by full immersion. Sometimes even of babies, which I think is a bit scary. If you were taking note of the words in the baptism service, baptism is symbolic of going down into the waters of baptism, under the water, being washed clean, and coming up again into a new experience, a new life, a new story, and a new start. Symbolically, it's about dying to sin and rising to new life about coming into full membership, if you like, of the church family, being welcomed in. Someone has said that the tomb was empty because what burst out of the tomb that Easter morning was life. Life in all its fullness. But that stone wasn't rolled away just to let Jesus out. It was rolled away to let us in. And all these years later, we too are invited to be witnesses to the resurrection to have our lives changed as the lives of those women were changed. Come and see, and then go and tell. As we go out into this week, I wonder who will we tell about what we've heard and seen this morning? When people say, what did you do this weekend? Or we say, oh, we went for a walk, um, and we, we saw family. But will we tell our families, perhaps, our friends, the people we see at work? about today? Will we be able to tell them that we too have been changed by the resurrection of Jesus? That we've heard the story of the empty tomb and have believed? I said at the beginning that the story of the resurrection is meant to take us back to the first Easter day, but to propel us forwards into a future which is full of potential and can change us in all sorts of ways. The invitation this morning and always, is for us all to come and see and then to go and tell. I'm going to pray and then hand up to Sarah. Father God, thank you for the story of the resurrection of those two faithful women who were invited into the tomb to go and see so that they could then go and tell. We pray that this morning you will touch us afresh with the news of the resurrection of Jesus and the new life on offer. And we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
got another hymn of uh, great praise um, called Living Hope. And in the, the chorus it says, Alleluia, there's salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, my living hope. So let's stand and sing Living Hope. Um, you, in Ukraine, Easter is uh, celebrated a week later than us. Um, we've got Victoria here, who's being very brave, she's very nervous, um, and representing a number of uh, Ukrainian families who are here this morning, and who indeed um, reg regularly worship with us, and have been coming um, on a Saturday to kind of get together as well. Um, you may or may not be able to see, there's some baskets down here, and I think there are a few more back on the font as well that have arrived a bit later on. And one back here with a candle as well. Um, so there you go. Um, Victoria is just going to tell us a few words 
um, about why they've brought baskets today, what they mean, and then uh, we're going to invite Margot to come and uh, do a blessing as well. So, Victoria. Yeah, definitely, no, I just want to say thank you for organizing this event. So, dear God, thank you for all the God things in our lives, big and small. Thank you to the people who care about us and support us. Thank you for the beauty of the world, the, bird, the birds, the trees, the free sky above our heads now. Thank you for the ever, uh, thank you for all of you for everything that make us uh, who we are or help us grow as a person and move forward. We are very grateful to you for organizing this event today, which is extremely important to us now. Thank you for this opportunity to, um, uh, to celebrate our Easter holiday with all Ukraine today. Being here, far from our homes, from families, we are feeling safe among incredible, sincere people with amazing souls. It is very difficult to express our feelings because it is pain, joy, happiness and sadness at the same time. But you should know that every good act, every kind word and warm smile are very helpful. Uh, they are of great importance and make sense. And today, such a holiday, we feel incredible support and unity. You have made a huge difference. Dear God, thank you for the people that we meet in our ways. And please bless them. And of course, perfectly organised, um, light is involved in the Orthodox Easter as well. Do you want to pick that up and I'll light it for you? You hold it and I'll light it. Okay. Um, yesterday in the old rectory, um, we kind of been meeting together and sharing some food, lots of pizza, I might add. Um, but um, um, Antonina, one of the ladies, brought a cake which is called um, a bashka which is actually a bit, bit of a kind of a bready type of cake, a little bit like a, a brioche, I guess, is the closest it comes. Um, but um, it's absolutely delicious. Um, and that's all part and parcel of um, the Ukraine Easter. So um, light is also part of the, the um, Ukraine Easter. Um, we've got one candle here, which I'm just going to light, that's on the... Oh. Okay, there's one there, and there's more coming. Wow. Isn't it wonderful how we use food to celebrate things so much? Thank you. You may want to come up afterwards and have a look at all the lovely things these baskets have in them and perhaps ask some of our friends what the symbolism of them is. But shall we just pray for... Oh, don't stop what you're doing. Carry on lighting candles and eating cake. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for Jesus' resurrection from the dead and the opportunity to celebrate it twice as we celebrate Easter Day today with our Ukrainian friends. We thank you for your many blessings to us and especially today. We thank you for our friends from Ukraine and for their families. We pray for your love and protection to surround them all, their families here and in Ukraine. And we pray for peace in Ukraine, for Easter blessings to be showered on them all, in Jesus' name, who was dead and has risen. Amen. Amen.
eggs look amazing. So much love and care that's gone into creating these. Fantastic. Where are we? Um, prayers. Jane, would you come and pray with us, please? prayer this morning. Um, just going to think about all the good things God has given us. Think about our senses and our bodies. But just think about what we're using in each line that I pray. Jesus, help my eyes to see all the good you send me. Jesus, help my ears to hear calls for help from far and near. Jesus, help my feet to go in the way that you will show. And Jesus, help my hands to do all the things loving, kind, and true. Jesus, help my lips to say good and helpful things each day. Amen. Lord, the stone was rolled away. Death could not hold you. And so now we too can live in your resurrection power. We thank you for that empty tomb and all it symbolizes. Help us to look inside and find your truth every day. And that stone rolled away, that huge rock, that reminds us that you are our rock and that we can depend on you always. Help us to make that rock our lives firm foundation and father god we thank you for the miracle of life here on earth and eternal life with you in heaven we thank you especially today for the lives of emil and zadie and we ask you bless them as they grow into the people you had planned bless their families and godparents and protect them all from evils of this world Show them your love each day, we ask. Lord God, we pray for your world and especially for the people of Ukraine, all those suffering and afraid. Be close to them and protect them. We pray for peace and justice in Ukraine and in all those places in the world where there is conflict and war. May all those agencies and people in power trying to help be granted strength and wisdom, and we pray that all those people feel your loving presence in the darkness. May the people of Ukraine, whether there or living in new countries, draw strength from your resurrection power this Easter, this Easter time. And closer to home now, we just pray for all those we know in our church community, in our own families, who are struggling in any way, those who are sad, bereaved, worried, anxious, those are, who are ill or struggling at all, Lord, bring healing to each and every one of them, we pray. And just remember those names in the quiet of our hearts now. So, Lord, may the glory and the promise of this joyful time of year bring us all peace and happiness and may Christ, our risen Saviour, always be by our side to bless us and be our loving guide. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I just have one really important notice, and that's just to say that there will be coffee in the... Um, Yew Tree Cafe next door after the service is finished. So remember to go for coffee and tea. Um, we're going to sing our last <coughs> hymn, but then Margot's going to come back and uh, do some last little bits for us. Really, really important bits. Um, but if we stand together and we're going to sing our last hymn, which is I Stand Amazed in the Presence, in the Presence of Jesus the Nazarene.
Sting Kim, can I invite you all to be seated just for a moment? <coughs> Baptisms are always a great joy, and we love celebrating with our baptism families. We also love celebrating marriages in this church, and this morning we have the joy of reading some bands of marriage for the third time. I've published the bands of marriage between Declan John Kearney and Ellen Abigail Bannister, entitled both qualified to be married in this church. This is for the third time of asking. If any of you know any reason in law why these two may not be married, you are pleased to let us know. Let's pray for them before we go any further. Father God, we thank you for Ellen and Dec. We thank you that they have come to the point where they wish to be married in your sight in this place. We pray that you will be at the heart of their preparations and at the heart of their marriage. In Jesus' name and for his glory. Amen. Now I'm going to, oh, so you're all organised. I'm going to invite um, Zadie and Emil to bring your parents to the front, if I may. <laughs> oh, they've all done a lot. Oh, no, they're all right. Goodness. The words I think, I hope, make her understood. There's a lot of talk in the baptism service about light and darkness and about how Jesus came out of the darkness to bring us into the light. And so I'm not going to give the newly baptized a present. I'm going to give them to somebody a bit bigger and more responsible. One there for you, Ben, and one there for you. Lizzie, but on behalf of your children, receive this light. This is a symbol of God's grace that you may pass from darkness to light. Walk in this light, both of you, all the days of your life. Shine as a light in the world to the glory of God the Father and of prayer. If it comes up, well, is there another prayer, Owen? No. Okay, well, I'll have that one in a minute. I will say this then as a final prayer. God of grace and life, in your love you have given us a place among your people. Keep us all faithful to our baptism and prepare us for that glorious day when the whole creation will be made perfect in your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Can we have the words again? Go in the light and peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you today, with those whom you love and those who love you, and remain with you always. Amen. Feel free to go and make your way to tea and coffee and refreshments and to look at these lovely baskets. Thank you all for being here this morning.